couple of videos here on the channel about solving trigonometric equations. And I have to admit, though, that that is not my favorite subject. I can deal okay with the simpler ones, like the ones in those videos, but I don't really have a huge toolbox of crazy identities that I can remember and to use them in smart and creative ways as needed for equations. That's not my favorite thing to do. And in part, it is because I am not a big fan of memorizing things in the first place. So it makes sense in my personality that I wouldn't have a huge toolbox of trigonometric identities and then that this kind of problem would not be my favorite. But what a lot of people notice when they do see me dealing with trigonometric equations is that there is something that I do different than they expected which is at the very end of the problems when I'm like, oh, so the sine has to be a half, so what is the angle that has that sine? And that is the moment when I like draw a little triangle and put numbers in the sides of the triangle. Maybe I get to mention Pythagoras in some way in that situation and I end up finding the answer in my head and then people go, Wait a second, wasn't there a song that you were supposed to sing to know these things? Wasn't there a table of values that you just memorized? And that is one of the things that annoys me the most in the whole of math. Please don't sing a song. So in this video, I will tell you what it is about the triangles and how I get to know these values of sines and cosines and tangents without memorizing anything. But more importantly, I want to use this as a framework to explain something bigger that annoys me in more contexts than just this one. So this is going to be an example of the way that people deal with the basic situation of having a question and wanting to get to the answer. Because you would think that the shortest path from a question to the answer is this straight line here that goes through knowledge. So let's see what knowledge that is. In this example where the question was, what is the sine of 60 degrees? And the answer is the square root of three over two. How do we get from here to there? Okay, so first you know that triangles are a thing that exists. You also know that the sum of all three angles inside of a triangle needs to be 180 degrees. You know that it's generally interesting when things are symmetric, so if you want to make them all the same, then that same number is going to be 60 because 3 times 60 is 180. And you know that this object is called an equilateral triangle. There's this very interesting fact about equilateral triangles, which is that they have all three sides be the same number. And that may feel obvious because it's the definition and it's even the name equilateral. Lateral is from the word sides. But in this case, I started by saying that the equilateral triangle had all the same angles. I wasn't mentioning the sides. So those are two different things that you know. The number two that I'm putting here is just an example. It could be any number, but two is going to be convenient for what I'm going to do next. I'm drawing this height in the triangle, and I know that heights are things that are perpendicular. They make 90 degree angles. And I know that symmetry is an incredibly interesting thing, and that this triangle has a lot of symmetry, so that in this case, this is not true for every triangle, but for this one, when I put this height here, by symmetry, this two, which is the length of the side, is going to be split in exactly half. So one here, one here. And by the way, also because of symmetry, I know that the height is splitting my 60 degrees on top and 30 in one side, 30 in the other side. I'm now going to erase half of this triangle because it's going to be enough to just look at one side. And I would like to figure out what is the length of the missing side. In order to do that, I'm going to use my old friend Pythagoras. This is what he is telling me, and it's a good thing that I know how to solve equations. Here is my answer, now I'm going to put it in the triangle, and now I'm going to look at the 60 degrees that is still left, because the other two are not here anymore. So I'm looking at the 60 degrees that I still have left, and I'm remembering that my question was its sign, so what do I know about sine? I know the definition of sine. Sine is the value of the opposite leg divided by the value of the hypotenuse. I also know the definitions of those two words, legs and hypotenuse. 
I know that the hypotenuse is the side that is opposite to the 90 degree angle in a right triangle. And I'm running out of space to write down all of the things that I know, but I do know what right triangles are. And I know about the concept of a side being opposite to an angle, which I'm also going to need here because I need the leg that is opposite to the 60 degrees. So I need to know that it's this one and not this one. So there's your answer. The sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2, but that's not why this is interesting. Asking questions is not interesting because of the answer we find. Asking questions is interesting because of the path through knowledge that takes us to the answer. So you may think that this is a very simple fact to know. It's just a number. What is the sine of 60 degrees? It's the square root of 3 over 2. But when you really stop to look at it, it's not that simple. There is all of this knowledge embedded in why this number is this number. And here is the really annoying part. When you sing a song, instead of doing this, you still want to get from your question to your answer. But you're not going to take this path. You're going to take this other path that bypasses all knowledge. And that is the real problem here. It's not that the problem is singing. It's not that the problem is memorizing. It's not that the problem is going faster than somebody else who is thinking like I'm thinking. I'm pretty fast, by the way. Thinking like this doesn't really slow me down in the long run. But that's not the problem. None of that is the problem. The problem is the intention to bypass knowledge. I don't want you to bypass it. I want you to go through knowledge because I want you to have knowledge. A lot of people object when I suggest that they follow this kind of strategy instead of just memorizing all of the values. They say that it's a simple question with a simple answer. That's a number. And I'm trying to make it more complicated by mixing it up with all of the things in this list. So to an extent, yes, that is what's happening because Mathematics is not a collection of millions of isolated facts. Math is an intricate web of connections between a lot of things. And when you try to memorize things separately, what you're doing is preventing yourself from seeing the web of connections. And I think something like this that gets you to think through those connections over and over again, every time that you need the information of the value of a sign, that's helpful to build knowledge. So that's it. I'm not suggesting that it's a better or faster or more effective or more correct way to get to these numbers. I'm just saying that there is a reason for it that is much more than getting to the number. It's to reinforce in your mind the connections between all of these concepts. And that's uh, pretty much all that I had to say for today. Uh, of course, you can do 30 degrees in the exact same picture. You can do the cosines as well. And if you're interested in the angle of 45 degrees, you can do something very similar. But instead of starting with an equilateral triangle, you start with a square and then you go through all of the same steps. I do have a few other examples that fit into this framework of memorizing something to bypass the knowledge, to go from a question to an answer. Of course, I'm not going to be able to come up with them off the top of my head right now, but I do promise to record other videos like this one when I do happen to be thinking about those other examples. For now, please practice this. The next time that you need a value of sine or a cosine, instead of looking for a memorized song in your head, look for all of these things. Draw a little picture. Try to not remember but discover what the value of the sine of 60 degrees is. I'm not here about to say that memorization is useless in math. Of course it's not. I used Pythagoras. I know it by heart. To some extent, we're always using memorized facts in math all the time. But the problem, like I said, is not the memorization. It's the intention to memorize instead of knowing. That's what the problem is.